Night Rider, a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. That's right, David Hasselhoff. It's special Tuesday. We're going to Munich. Circa 1997, a special two-hour event, David Hasselhoff, dressed in leather, collar popped up, singing all your favorite German songs. He's a rock and roll star. It's David Hasselhoff, the next two hours. Stick around for it. All right, no David Hasselhoff from Germany, but just for some poops and giggles later... Go to the old YouTube. Go to YouTube now and put in Corey Johnson, the neutral ground. Go to YouTube later and put in David Hasselhoff, German concert. He was a big rock and roll star like a generation or so ago in Germany. Not kidding. Yeah, go to YouTube. Put in the neutral ground with Corey Johnson. Click to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It doesn't cost anything. Keep you up to date on what's going down in the city of New Orleans and more. Thanks for joining us this afternoon on the radio. Oh, so fine. 93, nine FM lock and load it. Make it one of your presets. 93, nine FM. You can check us out on New Orleans own 107.9 FM. You folks that are traveling outside the metro, maybe to BR, up on the North Shore, over to southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, even the panhandle of Florida, 600 a.m., a sneaky little powerful a.m. signal carrying the program. We're on TV statewide at least the first 90 minutes of the two-hour talk radio program on TV statewide. Cox Channel 4. That's Your View, Louisiana, Cox Channel 4, 4 to 5.30 weekdays. Spectrum, Channel 333. Spectrum 333, 4 to 5.30 weekdays. All of that stuff and more that I just mentioned, you can find it on our website, CoreyTalks.com. Corey spelled K-A-A-R-E, CoreyTalks.com. I think you can even misspell it, C-O-R-E-Y talks.com, and it'll go to Corey Talks with the K-A-A-R-E. I think you can put CoreyJohnson.com, and it'll go to CoreyTalks.com. We are on YouTube, as I mentioned. Go to the search bar, put in The Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson, K-A-A-R-E. That's how you spell Corey, K-A-A-R-E. Don't look at me like that. Blame your Blame my parents. The Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson. YouTube it. The 4 o'clock hour brought to you by Leidenheimer Baking Company. Miss Peach is at the controls just mentioning Leidenheimer French bread. Picking up a loaf at the grocery. Leidenheimer French bread. Leidenheimer Baking Company. Baking that French bread you love. Part of the fabric. Part of the DNA of New Orleans. Since the late 1800s, and I'm not kidding you, and they've been doing it continuously since over 125 years, five generations, New Orleans family owned and operated New Orleans baked Leidenheimer French bread, tough to beat, served in the city's finest restaurants. And, and you know, if, if you're getting a po' boy in New Orleans, it better be on Leidenheimer French bread. Great article on exactly that in the Times Picayune just last week or two weeks ago. Leidenheimer French bread, so good, like good to the last crumb. Four o'clock hour brought to you by Leidenheimer Baking Company, makers of that Leidenheimer French bread that you love. Got a lot coming your way over the next two hours. You could all almost call it a two-lane Tuesday. Lots of two-lane stuff coming your way, Green Wave fans. If you're a Green Wave fan, you're going to like it. If You've got friends that are Green Wave fans. Let them know. Coming up in less than 10 minutes, Tulane Athletic Director David Harris is going to join us live on the program. Tulane AD joining us in less than 10 minutes. Coming up in the 5 o'clock power hour, Green Wave fans, John Sumrall, the Green Wave head football coach, will be joining us live on the program. Yeah, you, right. All kind of other goodies to get on. 
Mayor Vappy two. It's a it's the the follow up. It's the sequel. Mayor Latoya, the destroyer, Cantrell, Junket Cantrell, Officer Vappy two. At theaters soon. It might just go straight to DVD. Not quite sure. The rom com. Over my head, Miss Peaches. You're lucky if I know a TikTok. Romantic it's a long TikTok. Romantic comedy. A rom com, that's what it's going to be. Romantic comedy. Nice. Rom com. Rom com. You know, with the coming federal indictment, it just seems inevitable. Wouldn't you be more low profile? I don't know. But I guess that's like how it works. You wouldn't be getting a federal indictment, you know, to have to be more low profile. Boy, this one is just sickening. Sickening and dangerous for us. Sad, sickening, broken system. Where are the witnesses? What the hell's going on? No justice. And some murdering jerk is out on the street. 46-year-old Ernest Weatherspoon charges of murder and armed robbery. That 25-year-old St. Louis uh, visitor who happened to be a Tulane grad, just 25, Thomas Rolfs, murdered, shot in the chest twice. Weatherspoon's been in jail since December. They offered him a 10-year deal, a plea deal, 10 years. He turned it down, like knowing that, hey, I'm going to get away with this, and he did. Charges dropped, at least for now. We'll get DA Jason Williams on the program soon and ask him about this case, if it can be revisited. It's not a double jeopardy if you didn't take it to trial, right? 18-wheeler accident earlier on the I-10. It's all cleared up now, but boy, from what I understand, the elevated I-10, 18-wheeler eastbound by Elysian Fields accident, backing up the I-10 for miles. That's a nightmare when you're just stuck up there and can't get off. And then people are just like at the exit and could exit and maybe even eventually do, but sit there for minutes like contemplating life or something. Hey, recall number two. No, not LaToya the Destroyer. This time, St. Tammany Parish Coroner Christopher Tape. 20-something years ago, uh, uh, charged with uh, sexually abusing some young girl. They need 37,000 signatures, 180 days to get it. Christopher Tape's like, those charges were dropped. There's nothing to it. St. Tammany wants him out. 37,000 signatures needed. Corey Johnson with you. Pretty nice Tuesday afternoon, although getting into the 80s, huh? Little warm today. 80, 81 degrees. Humidity's at about 70%. Some good news. Now, now all week long, it's going to be waking up in the 70s and us creeping into the 80s. And if you're moving around, doing some physical stuff outside, you're going to sweat it hot. But then like Saturday or Sunday, maybe Monday, I mean, we're still like five days out. A little rain, a little coolio front is expected to come through where we could see wake up temperatures early next week in the 50s again. But then that only lasts for a couple of days, that 50s, 60s, sort of low 70s thing we got to experience during Fresh Quarter Fest and really the last few weeks, last few months. Now it looks like the 80s are back on board for late next week, which of course is not only Zurich Classic on the Best Bank, but weekend number one of two weekends of Jazz Fest. Now I'm keeping my fingers crossed we can get some little Coolio front French quarter fest nailed it. That rain, that cold front came in on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just outstanding weather. Can't wait to see those French quarter festival numbers when they come in had to be a huge economic impact. But right now it looks like we're getting good weather early next week and then back up to the eighties for jazz fest. We'll see. 
We'll see. Hey, speaking of Jazz Fest, you know a great Jazz Fest spot before, during, after? Katie's in Mid-City, right around the corner from the gates of Jazz Fest. Flat screen TVs like check out the Pels play-in game tonight at the Smoothie King Center. 6.30 tip-off against the Lakers. The Pels win. They're in the playoffs. Check it out at Katie's. Before, during, after, Jazz Fest. Katie's in Mid-City, the quintessential New Orleans neighborhood restaurant. Corey Johnson with you on a Tuesday afternoon. Tulane AD David Harris joins us next. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here, delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five area locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa, woodhousespas.com. Did you know Rouse's sells only Angus beef? Angus beef's natural marbling means more succulence and flavor. Whether you choose Rouse's USDA Prime, Choice, or Select, it'll be only Angus beef when you get it at Rouse's. Tastes like home. River City's Total Maintenance keeps you cool, New Orleans. NOAAC.com is your cool spot. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. <laughs> Trey Yen in Mandeville, a New Orleans tradition for over 40 years, serving the finest Louisiana-inspired Chinese cuisine. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Trey Yen. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. That's what I said. That's French for bread. The French bread of the city of New Orleans. Good to the last crumb. Leidenheimer French bread. For game-changing innovation, look to the Latrum family of companies located in Harahan. Intralox, a Latrum company, changed the game when they invented modular plastic conveyor belts over 40 years ago. These belts and innovative Intralox technology are transforming movement in manufacturing facilities around the world. Intralox is a dynamic global company now hiring in production, warehousing, shipping, and more. If you want to be part of our successful team, visit Latrum.com. That's L-A-I-T-R-A-M.com. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria has over 15 specialty sandwiches, a big 10-ounce burger, and some of the best pizza in New Orleans. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview between Canal Boulevard and West End. 
Custom window treatments can enhance the look and value of your home. At Helm Paint and Decorating, we're proud to offer custom plantation-style window shutters by Scandia. Perfect for any window, including large frames, French doors, sliding doors, and arches. American-made SL300 shutters are available in many colors to match your first home decor. We'll come out to measure, and you'll receive fast delivery. Plus, they're virtually maintenance-free. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore, let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Supply. Yeah, you right, Corey Johnson with you. Thanks so much for joining us on a Tuesday afternoon. Got a good one lined up for you, especially if you're a Tulane Greenway fan. Coming up in the five o'clock power hour. Tulane Green Wave head football coach John Sumrall is going to join us. Got a spring game this weekend. This guy knows all about that. Tulane Athletic Director David Harris is with us on the program. Hey, David. How are you doing, sir? Doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing just fine. How are things going? How are you liking being uptown in New Orleans at Tulane? How's it been so far as AD? Things are going incredibly well. I love being uh, back in the state. Yep. Uh, I love being uh, uptown here at Tulane. The people have been uh, fantastic. They've been very supportive. They've been really excited uh, about our future. And I've just really enjoyed kind of making the rounds and having conversations and uh, learning more about our university, about the department and ways that we can move forward together. So uh, really fortunate to be here and, and really excited about what's to come. Not trying to knock Northern Iowa in the least bit, just m- mentioning that, I don't know, Tulane in uptown New Orleans, Northern Iowa, maybe you couldn't come up with two more diametrically opposed places for you to be AD, <laughs> huh? Well, you, you're probably right uh, in that uh, they're definitely different places, both uh, good places, both have. Uh, great people and uh, great institutions, but uh, in a lot of ways, uh, very, uh, very different places. And uh, I feel fortunate to have uh, been at both. And because uh, Northern Iowa gave me my start as an athletics director, uh, so I will forever be indebted to them for that. But uh, really happy to be here uh, in New Orleans and uh, happy about the opportunity that they've given me to be a part of the Greenway family. You mentioned back home. You're a Louisiana guy, right? I am. Grew up in uh, Baton Rouge. All right. There you go. Old BR. I spent uh, six years of undergraduate studies up there. I'm familiar with Baton Rouge. (laughs) It's funny, David. Some Baton Rouge folks don't like New Orleans. Some New Orleans folks don't like Baton Rouge. And then there's some folks that like both. I've always liked both. I never understood why like one didn't like the other. But I see that sometimes with some folks. It's weird. I don't know. I like both places. Yeah, and I'm like you. I I like both. And I I think uh, in my case, it's because my family originated uh, from New Orleans. Both my parents uh, were born here in the city. Uh, And then after getting married and having my two older sisters here in New Orleans, then they moved to Baton Rouge. And so all of my mom's brothers and sisters were here uh, in New Orleans up until Katrina. And then uh, many of them moved to Baton Rouge. My dad's side of the family, uh, they kind of immediately moved all across the country. But they called New Orleans home and and, uh, really have a strong base here. So uh, from my family standpoint, I guess we grew up uh, having an affinity to both Baton Rouge, which was home, uh, you know, for uh, for me as a kid. But then New Orleans, which was kind of home, the home family base uh, for both sides of my family. Hey, David, uh, when when you took the Tulane job, was it like, you know, hey, we, we have an opening for the Tulane AD. You just fill that opening and sort of business as usual. Or is there some challenge that Tulane athletics have in front of them? And that was part of the reason why they brought you in. So I, I can only speak for uh, myself and, and my family as far as what we uh, were thinking, which was uh, a great opportunity at a great school. 
uh, a mass ex department that had great momentum, uh, working with good people in an environment um, that we were familiar with in a great city that was close to family. So as far as challenges are concerned, I think anywhere that you go, you're going to find a challenge that is unique to that athletics department and unique to that institution. So for us, it wasn't about, okay, Tulane has a specific type of challenge that we're attracted to. Uh, I can't speak for, you know, President Fitz and maybe he, he was looking for someone that he thought would fit a particular type of challenge. But from our point of view, uh, we were looking at it from an opportunity standpoint that there had been success uh, in multiple sports uh, recently. Uh, there was great momentum behind the program. And so if there was any challenge that you could identify from the outside in, it was going to be about the challenge of sustaining and building on the success that had happened uh, recently. Uh, we didn't want to be and don't want to be on a roller coaster of highs and lows we want to make sure that we're continuing a steady climb in the right direction. Uh, and so as we looked at it, uh, it was about here is a program that seems to be on the rise. How can we continue that rise? How we can how can we continue uh, to put uh, the university and the department in the best position to have success? Nothing about, hey, what facilities might be questionable? What programs might be questionable? How do we get them up to par by 2026 facilities built teams up to par? And then our goal to get into a power five by 2027, N nothing like that. You know what? I was aware that there was a, a campaign, a capital projects campaign. Uh, I was aware that that was going on, but not having been here uh, on campus anytime in the, in the, you know, uh, recent uh, past, I didn't know exactly what the state of the facilities were. And so you only know that here are those that are being targeted and that there was work to be done in that regard. Uh, you start to find out about the conversations about Power 5 opportunities uh, more as you got into the interview process and started doing your research. Uh, and so the way that, you know, we've approached that has been certainly if there are opportunities to look at the power five, then those are things that we want to be ready on. But first and ready for, excuse me, but first and foremost, uh, it was about how can we make sure that we're putting our best foot forward? Uh, how can we prepare? How can we have the best coaches, the best facilities, the uh, uh, best that we can do with our student athletes so that if any opportunity were to come knocking on our door, we would have the ability to make a decision at that time about what's best. And I've said, you know, several times that uh, that's the part of this that we ultimately can control, uh, doing what we need to do to make sure that we're prepared for opportunities when they come. Uh, and then in conjunction with the uh, president and the board and other decision makers make the decision that's in the best interest of Tulane University. Uh, and so you can never put a time frame on something like that because you never know when opportunities will present themselves. So the idea is to try to expedite all the work that you're doing uh, to try to make sure that uh, you have a department that is ready for whatever opportunity happens to present itself. And so you end up having timelines that are probably tied more closely to facility construction. Uh, and I know we have some of those established and some of those uh, projects are, are currently going on. So uh, as I looked at that and as uh, we had an opportunity to talk uh, with those who worked here. Not only do you get excited pretty quickly about what's being done, uh, but about the uh, further investment uh, that, you know, there seemed to be an understanding that further investments would be needed uh, in order to sustain and certainly build on the success that had happened previously. Tulane Athletic Director David Harris is with us. Hey, David, uh, you mentioned if they come knocking and being ready and that type of thing. Should the Tulane Athletic Department maybe hire some outside group with, hey, our mission, our goal is to get into what would be a Power Five conference or whatever the next thing is, at least staying relevant? Isn't that important maybe to be proactive on that instead of reactive since the environment's changing so quickly? And 
there's so many other Tulane type, uh, you know, universities that that desperately would like to slip into the Power Five. We've seen a few just recently that used to be on Tulane schedule annually, a trio that jumped into Power Five. So I, I definitely think it's important uh, to be proactive when opposite, whenever the opportunity presents itself, whether that's from hiring an outside consulting firm or not. Uh, it's, it's you know that depends on uh, the university and what they decide is in their best interest. But the, whether you decide to go in that direction or not, uh, any opportunity that you have uh, to be able to position uh, yourself. Uh, in a better uh, spot than you are now is something worth having a conversation uh, about. And I know that uh, even prior to my arrival here, uh, conversations have been had about uh, potential uh, opportunities and and trying to prepare uh, for what uh, may happen here in the future. Uh, But ultimately, we have to keep our eye on uh, where we are as a proud member of the American Conference uh, it has been a great conference, a great conference for us, uh, a place that we are proud to call home. And I think it's a mistake uh, to look too far beyond uh, where you're currently uh, positioned, uh, because uh, ultimately we believe in, in being a, a good and strong member of our conference and uh, just continuing to do the work that we're asked to do and then uh, letting the future uh, in some cases, take care of itself based on the investments that we're making today. Yeah, American Athletics been about as good as it can get. I mean, that that's definitely staying relevant. Uh, every year, American Athletic ranks higher than one of those five power fives in football, for instance. So uh, it's almost like it's pseudo power five. Hey, Dave, we're going to knock out a quick break. Come right back. We're visiting with Tulane University Athletic Director, David Harris, Corey Johnson with you all the way till six o'clock. Don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, in this Lamarck Automotive Complex is something called quick lane. Tires, wheel alignments, you know, struts, servicing your transmission. We're doing all makes and models. It doesn't have to have been purchased from us. It's for you. It handles your lifestyle with your budget in mind. And we want to get you in and out as quick as possible. Quick lane, you got to come see it. You're going to love the experience right there at Williams Boulevard in Kenner. Outdoor dining, Middle Eastern cuisine, under the oak trees, Lebanon's Cafe, some of the city's finest lamb chops and shish kebab, Carrollton at Jeanette by the streetcar barn, Lebanon's Cafe. The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five area locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa, woodhousespas.com. For Leidenheimer Baking Company, producing the perfect French bread is more than a vocation. It's a sacred mission. And for five generations, they've used the same time-honored process, baking their signature loaf with its crisp crust and delicate center, unique and still good to the last crumb. From the finest French Quarter restaurants to your local po'boy shop, for over 125 years, New Orleans' own Leidenheimer. 1970 was an exciting time in New Orleans. The first Jazz Fest was held, the city hosted its first Super Bowl, and the first Helm Paint location opened on Earhart Boulevard. While the floppy disks, mood rings, and pet rocks may have come and gone since the 70s, Helm Paint has grown to become your premier source for quality Benjamin Moore products, competitive pricing, and personal service. Please visit one of our locations today, and we'll meet our competitors' prices on any identical product. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore, let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Supply. In USA Today ranked the 10 best must-visit New Orleans restaurants for travelers. Mid-City's own Katie's made the list. USA Today says Scott Craig is chef-owner at Katie's, a much-loved Creole Italian eatery that draws armies of regulars for lunch, brunch, and dinner. A neighborhood spot where locals congregate and New Orleans-style hospitality rules. Indeed it does. Katie's in Mid-City. 
For game-changing innovation, look to the Latrum family of companies located in Harahan. Intralox, a Latrum company, changed the game when they invented modular plastic conveyor belts over 40 years ago. These belts and innovative Intralox technology are transforming movement in manufacturing facilities around the world. Intralox is a dynamic global company now hiring in production, warehousing, shipping, and more. If you want to be part of our successful team, visit Latrum.com. That's L-A-I-T-R-A-M.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. Rouse's Market is hiring. With 65 stores, full or part-time employment, and flexible scheduling, Rouse's has a job for you, or maybe even a career. Apply at any Rouse's store or online at rouse's.com. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria has over 15 specialty sandwiches, a big 10-ounce burger, and some of the best pizza in New Orleans. Francesca Deli and Pizzeria on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview between Canal Boulevard and West End. David Harris, Tulane University Athletic Director, joins us live on the program. Coming up around 5:20, Tulane Green Wave head football coach John Sumrall is going to join us. We got a Tulane Tuesday going, David. That sounds great to me. Me too. It's more than just a rhyme. Hey, uh. The football bubble, what's going on with that on that little 80-yard strip in front of the Riley Athletic Center? Uh, I guess that's a little bit off Willow Street. I'm, I'm trying to think of the Yeoman's wife's name because that's the curved street that it's on, I believe, Yeoman. Anyway, what's up with the football bubble, David? So we continue to uh, make progress with the uh, plan uh, still being to Uh, begin construction on that uh, here at the beginning of the summer uh, and to have it uh, completed uh, by the beginning of the fall. Uh, And so we're excited uh, to be able to have that partnership with campus where it will be a facility that's used by uh, our football team primarily, uh, but then secondarily, uh, you know, some other sports may have a a need uh, as well, but then also a space uh, that campus and uh, student affairs, campus recreation uh, will also use. We know that it's a, a space that is uh, valuable uh, on our campus for all of our students and uh, certainly having the bubble there will make it accessible uh, year round and uh, allow us to have a space to be able to get out of the elements, uh, get out of the rain uh, and be able to stay right here on our campus. So. Uh, when you know that you have challenges with space, as we do on our campus, uh, having those types of partnerships become important. Uh, and so here's an opportunity for us to further elevate uh, our department uh, and our football program uh, while still being uh, good partners with campus. You said primarily football. Is it really or is it primarily what it is now? And only if inclement weather hits would football use it. It's going to be open for students like they have it right now, playing flag football, soccer, intramural stuff, right? Right. It, it will continue to be open uh, for students. Uh, we're going to be working with campus to determine the schedule uh, by which, you know, each of the entities who are sharing uh, use of that facility will have a designated time. Uh, throughout the week to be able to be in there. And so during the time that athletics uh, is designated to be in there, uh, then we imagine football will have uh, use of it uh, as uh, the weather dictates or if there are other reasons that they feel it's in their best interest uh, to be in there during their designated time. Well, about seven. Uh, there will also be an open time uh, where, you know, students will have the ability where it's not really reserved 
uh, through campus recreation or through athletics yeah. where it's just open yep. uh, for students to be able to use. Well, about 70, 80 yards, and it'll be climate controlled, right? Right. My understanding is that it's about 70 yards. And is what, what's the cost? About $5 million, roughly? You know, we're trying to get uh, an update on the cost. I, I've heard in the five to seven million dollar range. I think it's closer to seven. Okay. Wow. Yeah, because that, that's that's good to know. So more state of the art, better. Um, Wilson Center expansion, which is really for all sports, Title Nine compliance, but one could argue it's a it's a football facility. Uh, Wilson Center expansion. What's the goal on getting that going? Well, it's actually a Wilson Center renovation, and the Wilson Center is the home of a lot of our different sports programs. It's really uh, the heartbeat uh, of the athletics department in in many cases. It's where I'm speaking to you from uh, now here on the third floor. So lots of our sports uh, call the Wilson Center home, and what we're we're doing a couple of different things. One of which is if you come into our atrium, you see that we are having – uh, a massive kind of reconstruction, uh, rebranding, uh, update, uh, adding some uh, technological pieces uh, to it as well in order to modernize the entrance so that as people are coming in, uh, that they are immediately presented with a more modern, more functional uh, space for the department. And then uh, on the wing that houses our football program, we're also doing some work to be able to update some of the offices, the head coach's office, the team room, uh, and some of the position meeting rooms. And so uh, that is ongoing. It is also scheduled to be completed uh, during this summer. And so we're excited about the work that's already been uh, accomplished. Uh, as we come in every day, we're in the middle of a construction zone. Wow. But, uh, we're excited about that because we know that it's making us better uh, and it will be a better place to work and a better place uh, to be able to host the, the prospective student athletes, their families and the visitors that come to see us on a regular basis. Will there be some premium seating for Yeoman Stadium, essentially like on the roof of the Wilson Center? So we're looking at, uh, as we go into the Investing in Excellence campaign, uh, we are looking at the construction of a sports performance center, uh, and it is that facility that will likely uh, have some premium seating opportunities that will be, you know, through in conjunction with uh, Yeoman Stadium. So that's not a part of the Wilson Center, but with the Sports Performance Center, whether it's on the roof or the third floor, which we're looking at some suites, uh, on the ground level, where we're looking at a, a club section area, uh, as well as doing some loads boxes there in that north end zone, as we get to that piece of the uh, of the renovation of the uh, investing in excellence campaign, uh, we will then be looking at the inclusion of some premium seating opportunities that we believe will give our fans and supporters a, a better way, uh, an enhanced way to be able to enjoy uh, Greenway football. Uh, but then also give the department a, a way to be able to increase revenue and our ability to be able to make investments back in our student-athletes. Thank you for the clarification. I thought the Wilson Center expansion was the sports performance and all of that. It's, it's two separate it. things. Yeah, two separate things. Okay. When, when do you break ground on the sports performance? When that's supposed to be this year? <laughs> You know, we, we haven't made a determination when we're going to break ground on that. We obviously would like to do it as soon as possible, but we're still involved in conversations. Uh, and so no uh, definite decision has been made on that. Didn't John Sumrall maybe come in a two-lane sort of connected to all this? Well, you know what? Uh, many of these things, if not all of them, uh, were in place, not only as John was being hired, but even as I was being hired. Now, we certainly have come in and had conversations and talked about maybe making tweaks and adjustments and accelerating uh, the pace things in a different direction. But uh, in many ways, there was significant momentum happening here on the facility front, which I think uh, was attractive to John and certainly attractive to me as well. And we want to be a part of making sure that these things come to fruition and to do uh, a number of uh, other things in the future as we try to address uh, what our needs are going to be. Uh, so uh, we had the momentum started before we even uh, walked in the door, yep. uh, which was a, a positive thing for us. Yep, yep. This has all been talked about for a while. Tulane University AD David Harris is with us. 
Hey, David, just going back a second before we go forward. October of this year, it's raining. Tulane will be able to go into a bubble, the football program. Say that again. I'm sorry, Corey. October of this year, it's raining outside. Tulane football program will be able to go inside of their new indoor bubble this year. That is what we anticipate absent, you know, unexpected uh, delays uh, that would cause it not to be a ready, but uh, that is certainly our desire. It's a quick build. It's 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 the new field there. It's a foundation. And then this bubble goes up pretty quickly, right? It's not like full blown construction. Right. I mean, when you're doing a a bubble, it it can obviously be done uh, a lot faster than uh, some other types of facilities. So relatively speaking, uh, certainly within the athletics world where, you know, projects typically take anywhere between a year to two or three years. uh, This is a a fast construction, certainly. You mentioned not a lot of, you know, land and availability as far as space on the Green Wave campus. You guys are going to eventually need a basketball arena, right? I mean, 4,500 ultimately won't do the job in the future. Uh, Talk about that coupled with, can you build anything right on Claiborne where that old Rosenhall dorm used to sit, which is now just a parking lot right there on Claiborne? or, Or is that still off limits to athletics? Well, I don't know the degree to which it's off limits. I hadn't had that information or had those conversations. And when it comes to basketball, uh, we will certainly look at all the possibilities. It's still early to make any determinations uh, about anything that would happen on that. And our our goal at this point uh, is to try to do everything that we can to have uh, our fans and supporters come out and, and watch our teams play. Uh, and to do everything we can to make sure that they're having an enjoyable experience, a great game day experience uh, when they come out to the games. But uh, we're not in a position as of yet to be able to say, hey, here's what, if anything, is going to happen with basketball or uh, with uh, the parking lot uh, area that you've mentioned. But uh, we know that as we want to look forward uh, and do everything we can to improve uh, Tulane athletics, uh, we're certainly going to consider all of our possibilities. And I guess that would include that large plot of land the athletic department owns right across the parish line on Jefferson Highway. Maybe some future athletic facilities being considered for that space. That's right. And I've heard about that same space as well. Uh, And so as we look at our future, uh, I know that uh, the existence of that land will be a significant part of the conversation. Dave, we've got about 30 seconds. Why should folks head to the spring game Saturday? Because uh, the summer all era is here. Uh, we are excited uh, about coach, the staff, and our team uh, and uh, what they're going to be able to accomplish uh, in the upcoming year. And so this is uh, really the first chance to get a, a bit of a sneak preview uh, about uh, what uh, the team is going to be like as we go into uh, the upcoming season. So uh, come out, uh, have a great time. Uh, there'll be a number of things that'll be going on, uh, including a, a, a wave warehouse sale uh, in gate, uh, the Gate B Plaza. Uh, we'll be giving free sandwich coupons uh, to the fi- for uh, firehouse subs for the first thousand fans. Wow! Uh, we're going to have a voucher for a free Tulane license plate frame for the first five hundred fans. Uh, there'll be a free raffle to win two tickets uh, to Crawfest. Uh, and then there'll be a special edition spring game poster uh, for the first thousand fans. So if just coming to see the team and getting a sneak preview on the season wasn't enough, we have a number of other things to incentivize people to come out and uh, have a great time. Yep. Yeoman's an underrated experience. I can't stress that enough. It's a great college experience outside. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, it. it's a great, uh, it's a great environment a great it is. experience and uh, we want to keep it that way. Hey, David, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me, Corey. I'd appreciate, I appreciate it and uh, wish you the, the best for the rest of the afternoon. And uh, roll wave. Roll wave. David Harris, Tulane University AD, joining us. Corey Johnson with you. Coming right back. That's what I said. For over 120 years, New Orleans' very own Leidenheimer French Bread. 
Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. <laughs> Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. It's time to relax. The Woodhouse Day Spa, Metro New Orleans' premier day spa experience, now with five area locations. For a day of relaxation or maybe just a quick one-hour getaway, the Metro area's premier day spa experience is at the Woodhouse Day Spa. And now five area locations. New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and our newest location in Mandeville. The Woodhouse Day Spa. WoodhouseSpas.com. Rouse's Market is hiring. With 65 stores, fuller part-time employment, and flexible scheduling, Rouse's has a job for you, or maybe even a career. Apply at any Rouse's store or online at rouse's.com. Young's Dry Cleaning, with two walk-up locations with personal service. Young's on Claiborne and Young's on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview. Young's Dry Cleaning. Call 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. What actually lasts a lifetime? Not much, but at Helm Paint, we have something guaranteed to last a lifetime. Benjamin Moore's Regal Select. This paint and primer in one offers cutting-edge waterborne technology, smooth application, and long durability. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore, your New Orleans paint store. My situ, that's Arabic for grandmother, used to make the best football kibbe. You can experience kibbe just like my grandmother used to make and so many other Middle Eastern favorites on the streetcar line, Lebanon's Cafe. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here, delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. Wow. Get the two pack. Corey Johnson back at you on a Tuesday talking to my mommy during the break. She's pretty darn good. She's the Walgreens. She needs some batteries for her key fob for her car. She's 93. She drives. Drives better than you, okay? And uh, she went to the battery rack and was just like, my goodness. You know, just saw all the batteries. Which one do I need? I'm like, all right, it looks like a quarter. It's number 2025. She's like, it looks like a nickel. I see a four pack. They want $23 for this. It's like, you only need two of them. Oh, here's a two pack, $14.95. I'm like, yep, grab it. Anyway, pretty quick. Come as peaches? I mean, she was, that was, would someone like 30 or 40 move much quicker than that? About the same. I mean, about the same. I'm telling you. It's by herself, handling it just fine. Now, we're not going to have her install the batteries in the key fob because that, that is a pain in the butt for anybody. I mean, I could probably tell her, but I, honestly, I don't know her key fob myself, like how it would work. You know, it's like a, pop your fingernail or do something goofy. So I don't know, but one of us, my brother, my sister, one of us will get it done. My mom might get it done. Who knows? <laughs> don't, don't, she, she doesn't mess around, man. She's a machine. She doesn't stop. And she's sharp too. She's not no mental or physical limitations. It's pretty amazing. I'm lucky. Anyway, 2025. She got them. She got the batteries for her key fob. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, if you missed the 
four o'clock hour, most of what we just had as the four o'clock hour. You missed Tulane University Athletic Director David Harris joining us. I guess the big news news for Wave fans is that that bubble apparently in about the next month or two. I mean, we're in April. Looks like it's a pretty quick construction. Three months, maybe. David Harris says they're going to break ground and over the summer build it and have it ready for the fall. I mentioned, you. hey, it's October. It's raining. Will John Summerall's team be able to go inside the bubble? He says yes. So it's a quick build. Originally, the talk was 3 to $5 million. I mentioned a $5 million figure. David said more like $7 million, which I'm sure it's inflation and things of that nature, but also probably tweaks and making it a better facility. Hey, guys, if we're going to do this and go this far for just a little bit more, we can, you know, it's like buying a car. You get the, uh, the glass roof. You get the four-wheel drive. You get the keyless entry. You know, you, these things start making the car nicer where you walk up and you got the key in your pocket. You touch the handle, the door unlocks. You get in the car, you push a button, it starts. You don't have to pull the key out the pocket. Your sunroof is a glass roof, the whole roof of the car. Instead of two-wheel drive, it's four-wheel drive. It's all-wheel drive. Just little things like that. Leather instead of pleather or, you know... Things of that nature, real wood instead of not real, whatever. I'm just saying you, 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 you start throwing in these little extras. Yes, it increases the price, but you get a nicer car. So you're, you're going to the trouble to buy the car. I'm not saying go max it out. I'd like to. There are limits to everything. Tulane would like to build a building there and not a bubble, but there are limits. It'd be pretty nice for $7 million bucks. And when you think bubble, don't think like temporary because that bubble could be there for decades. Just head on down to the parish. You know, Miss Peaches, you head on down in Araby. You're going down. I'm, I'm trying to, I, I guess that's St. Claude, I guess it is, to St. Bernard Highway. Yeah. They got that little church on the right. Yeah. It's a little bubble. Sure. That thing's what, been there like, what, 10 years, huh? It looks pretty solid, like it's not messed up or broken or torn or anything and it goes through storms it's pretty durable uh, another example uh the city park uh golf park golf cart storage barn by the driving range it's a bubble it's like there's like ropes holding it to the ground these things last a long long time i mean even though, even though it's a bubble it's like you're saving on construction obviously it's a lot cheaper but uh, very durable, apparently. So anyway, Tulane football, I guess the that 70, 80-yard field on Yulman, the little curved street in front of the Riley Center right off of Willow, that's going to have uh, a bubble, climate-controlled, indoor football facility that the students will be able to use and all that stuff. As far as this sports performance center, which is about – Title IX compliance, which is about a football facility. It's like 50, 60, 70 million bucks. No timeline. It was supposed to be late this year. Break ground on the bubble in, in May or June. Have it ready for the fall. Break ground on the Sports Performance Center in like November or December. And have it ready sometime in 2025. No, that, that's part of football. We'll talk to... John Sumrall about that in the five o'clock powwow. Well, that's right, Green Wave fans. We go from the AD in the four o'clock hour to the head football coach coming your way in 20 short minutes. John Sumrall, Tulane Green Wave head football coach, will join us live on the neutral ground. Yeah, you right. I'm running air conditioning. How's your AC running? If it's making a funny noise, not cooling like it should, worse, not working at all, don't stress out. Get the problem solved quickly. River City's total maintenance. Fair and honest Lucas and the boys. Air conditioning experts that come immediately. That means right now. NOLAAC.com is all you need to know. Weekday, weekend, overnight, holiday. You need AC help? NOLAAC.com. Corey Johnson with you on a Tuesday afternoon. Reaching the low 80s. Might have a little Coolio and the gang front coming in. 
Sunday, early next week, we might have some high 50s, low 60s to start the week. But I think my Jazz Fest Lyric Classic, back into the 80s. What's that, Blue Boy? You enjoy David Harris. You're a Green Wave fan. And what? You're looking forward to John Sumrall next. Blue Boy, thanks. Stick around. Five o'clock powwow is next. You're on the neutral ground with Corey Johnson on TV on Cox Channel 4 and Spectrum Channel 333. Also on YouTube, on radio at NOLA Talk 93.9 FM, WSLA New Orleans. It's 5 p.m. For game-changing innovation, look to the Latrum family of companies located in Harahan. Intralox, a Latrum company, changed the game when they invented modular plastic conveyor belts over 40 years ago. These belts and innovative Intralox technology are transforming movement in manufacturing facilities around the world. Intralox is a dynamic global company now hiring in production, warehousing, shipping, and more. If you want to be part of our successful team, visit Latrum.com. That's L-A-I-T-R-A-M.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency, Auto Home Flood Business, 504-556-0809, Dave Miet, insagency.com. Here at the NOLA Coalition, we love our kids and we love our city. The people of New Orleans are standing together for a better future. By harnessing our collective resources, the NOLA Coalition will create a safer, more prosperous city for all residents. Your support is needed to help reduce violence, invest in our children, and drive generational change. Join now at nolacoalition.info. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Rouse's New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's has the only full service grocery stores both in the French Quarter on Royal Street and in the CBD on Barone in the old Sewell Cadillac building. The Rouse's on the River, Chapatulas at Napoleon, is in a century old warehouse. And uptown on Ferret at the corner of Valence is Rouse's all new boutique store. With seven locations in Orleans Parish, Rouse's is New Orleans Grocery Store. Rouse's Markets taste like home. Hi, this is Joey Helm. My dad, Bunky Helm, had a vision. A vision of a locally family-owned store serving the residential and commercial paint needs of New Orleans. I think dad would be proud of today's Helm Paint and Decorating. And here's why. We have the best technical staff in the business, providing the best color matching service in Southeast Louisiana. Perfect matching for any color and any brand. Then we'll save your color so you don't have to save those old cans. Helm Paint offers free two-hour delivery. Our in-store decorators will assist you on deciding what color and type of paint to best showcase your home. But most importantly, as your local independent Benjamin Moore dealer, our products provide the greatest value in the paint industry, superior coverage, and Benjamin Moore paint simply covers better and lasts longer. New Orleans is a city of vibrant color, and no one else provides the paints of New Orleans like Helm Paint and Decorating. Visit any of our six locations or online at HelmPaint.com. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here, delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. 
Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine, as unique as you. Ford F-150, number one seller in America. What about in the USA? Uh, let's see, what about in the world? Who sells more trucks than Ford? Nobody. It's because the Lamar team is the real team. All that makes it happen is one goal. Everybody having a great experience at Lamar Ford. We became number one for a reason, because we're good. And we need to prove it every day, every deal, all the time. That's what I said. That's French for bread. Leidenheimer. Five generations, family owned and operated. Leidenheimer French bread. I know, I'm repeating myself, but I can't help it. When I hear this song, it reminds me when I was a child in the 70s growing up. The song needs to get me hyped up, like I just ate a spoon of sugar or something. Listen to the song. I mean, in the 70s, this was hot. And then the video montage, the openings, the scenes, the zooming in and out, up on the balconies, the planes flying in, Hawaii, pretty dramatic. That's got to go down as one of the all-time great television theme songs and video montage openings. Fantastic. Hawaii Five-0 in the 70s, starring Jack Lord as McGarrett and Chin Ho as Wong Tong. Corey Johnson with you. Borderline racist comments. It's not, though. What was it? Oh, boy. Miss Peaches, find out. Find out for us who Chin Ho was. Just Hawaii Five-0 Chin Ho. Chin Ho actor. That's it. I mean, because it wasn't Frank Smith, okay? Chin Ho. That was his name in the in the show, right? Chin Ho, right? Give me the new version of uh, I don't want that. Uh, Just put Chin Ho Hawaii Five O. C I H N H O. Chin Ho Hawaii Five O. Actor. Uh, yeah, they, Man, I'm telling you. They, they want to give me the new guy. Wow, that's terrible. Well, uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna Google. Let's see, Miss Peaches. Let's go with uh Chin Ho, Hawaii Five-O actor. Oh, boy. Cam Fong. <laughs> uh, Cam Fong is Chin Ho. Cam Fong is Chin Ho. Oh, Corey. Eight-year-old humor, huh? Cam Fong, best known for his co-starring role as Chin Ho in the original. Uh, yes, he was born Cam Chong. He was he was born Cam Tong Chun. The name Fong was a result of a teacher incorrectly teaching him how to write his name. Wow, wow, that's crazy. Anyway, Cam Fong is Chin Ho. All right, Miss Peaches. I think if you said that to someone, that's like, four, if you just went, I said, Cam Fong as Chin Ho, they would just be like, what? What language are you speaking? Cam Fong as Chin Ho. They have no clue. Anyone over 45 or 50, like, why 5 oh, man, McGarrett, Dano, Chin Ho. Anyway, just a reminder, folks, Kim Fong as Chin Ho. Mayor. Junket Cantrell, Officer Jeffrey Vappy. It's a sequel. It's Mayor Vappy 2, opening Friday at a theater near you. 
you'd think with that incoming federal indictment, I mean, that seems inevitable. Wouldn't you be a little bit more low profile? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess that's like, you know, kind of the criminals are stupid kind of thing. You know, it's like that. That's why she and he are probably are getting federally died because this is how they are. This is how they act. Just sort of brazen and unconscious and belligerent and kind of crazy. I, I, I don't know, man. But, you know, I'm not under federal indictment. I don't have a, a, a defense attorney. <laughs> None of that. Anyway. Speaking of just sickening today, this news, just no justice. 46-year-old Ernest Weatherspoon, he's been in jail since December of, of 2021. He's the guy that murdered 25-year-old Thomas Rolfs from St. Louis, the, the kind of revisiting New Orleans, that guy, a Tulane grad, just 25, armed robbery, shot in the chest two times, just... Pointless. 46-year-old Ernest Weatherspoon just witnesses disappearing. As of right now, the DA's office dropping the case. No, just no justice for Thomas Rolfs. And 46-year-old Ernest Weatherspoon, a very dangerous character who's back out on the streets of Orleans Parish. I mean, is this going to end up good? In three to five years, in three to five months, what's a better chance? Us hearing something that Ernest Weatherspoon did that was bad, or he's turned his life around and he's feeding the homeless at Azanam Inn. Earlier today, big traffic jam on I-10 heading east, the elevated Claibans, 18-wheeler right by the Elysian Fields exit, backing up traffic for miles. It's all clear, I guess as clear as it's going to be towards the east. Hey, real quick, you folks going up the high rise, psst, there's not a fire breathing dragon on the other side of the hill. You can, well, I'm pretty sure, Miss Peaches, Miss Peaches says, you sure? As she goes 25 up the high rise and 75 down it. I never understood. It's like bumper to bumper traffic going up. You come over the hump. It's like no one there. And every, and the few people that are there are doing 70. It's like why half the speed up, twice the speed down? I'm pretty sure there's not a fire breathing dragon on the other side of that high rise hump. But boy, that gets people scared in New Orleans. Just... I don't know what it is. Just I hit it and I accelerate. I, I, it, it's weird. It's gravity. You're in a car. You have to accelerate up the hill to keep the speed up. Otherwise, your speed will decrease dramatically. Anyway, I'm sure there's bumper to bumper traffic on the high rise heading out towards the east. Recall number two. That's not not Latoya the Destroyer. This time, St. Tammany Parish Coroner Christopher Tape. They need 37,000 signatures in the next 180 days. Isn't it sad? We know like recall rules now filed with the Secretary of State's office. St. Tammany, I think, would have a chance that affluent parish, highly educated, lots of money, wherewithal. New Orleans, man, I'm, that that was such a disappointment. And I, I admit, I'm, I'm I'm raising my hand up. I, I got fooled with Carter. You know, I don't blame uh, uh, Belden Baptiste. Belden Baptiste is a New Orleans character. I know him. You know, I don't blame him. If you had expectations of Belden Baptiste, like with the recall, but Eileen Carter, I did. I mean, she kind of talked the talk and then did not walk the walk at all. Did not walk the walk at all. And I I bought in hook, line, and sinker. You know? I really did. I was having Eileen Carter on all the time, actually thinking, like, there's a chance the recall could work, all that. That was just an embarrassment. That was a joke. They, they didn't hit, like, 50% of the numbers. It was a big waste of time. And where – someone needs to audit that million bucks – your boy, what was that guy, Farrell on uh, St. Charles Avenue that funded it, 95-plus percent of it, a million dollars? Where'd that cash go? Not in the recall. Jeez, and Pete's. It's a lot of money per, per signature. 
Corey Johnson with you on the neutral ground. I am not Cam Fong as Chin Ho. John Sumrall is going to join us. Tulane Green Wave head football coach in just a few minutes on the program. Yeah, you right. Fired up to talk a little Green Wave football. Spring game this Saturday at Yeoman. Last hour, if you missed it, it's all right. You can check it out on YouTube later. The Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson on YouTube. Click to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Last hour, we visited with Tulane University AD, David Harris, talking facilities and the like. Good news for the football team, that bubble. Apparently, construction is going to start in the next month or so. Have it done by the fall for this football season. For this football season. Hey, Young's Dry Cleaning has been around since 1940. Before this country got into World War II, 1940, 84 years of excellence. Fourth generation, Dale, his brother Don, taking care of Young's Dry Cleaning. Walk-up locations, free pickup and delivery, home or office, manless locker locations. You dump off your dirty stuff in a safe, secure locker. Two short days later, pick it up at that safe, secure locker. Those Young's Express lockers, right under your nose. You just may not know it. Right where you live or where you work. You folks out at Mishu, there's like three sets of Young's Express lockers out at Mishu's facility. And all over, East Bank, West Bank, Metairie, downtown. Find out more at youngsdrycleaning.com. A New Orleans institution. They're the biggest because they've always been the best. Youngsdrycleaning.com. Tulane head football coach John Sumrall joins us next. Custom window treatments can enhance the look and value of your home. At Helm Paint and Decorating, we're proud to offer custom plantation-style window shutters by Scandia. Perfect for any window, including large frames, French doors, sliding doors, and arches. American-made SL300 shutters are available in many colors to match your personal decor. We'll come out to measure, and you'll receive fast delivery. Plus, they're virtually maintenance-free. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Supply. Young's Dry Cleaning, with two walk-up locations with personal service. Young's on Claiborne and Young's on Harrison Avenue in Lakeview. Young's Dry Cleaning. Call 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. The Port of New Orleans is the gateway to global commerce, the economic engine that moves Louisiana and our country forward. For more than 125 years, Port Nola has continued to deliver the goods we use each and every day by river, rail, and by road. No matter what, it all happens right here, delivering Louisiana's future at the Port of New Orleans, your working river. Learn more about your Port of New Orleans. Visit portnola.com. Rouse's Market is hiring. With 65 stores, fuller part-time employment, and flexible scheduling, Rouse's has a job for you, or maybe even a career. Apply at any Rouse's store or online at rouse's.com. There's a Middle Eastern restaurant that's less than five minutes from where Causeway and River Road meet, Lebanon's Cafe. Convenient to Old Metairie and Old Jefferson, Carrollton at Jeanette on the streetcar line, Lebanon's Cafe. The Woodhouse Day Spa, with five airy locations, New Orleans, Metairie, Slidell, Baton Rouge, and now Mandeville. A day of relaxation is just moments away at the Woodhouse Day Spa, woodhousespas.com. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine as unique as you. 
Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504-556-0809. Dave Miet. INSAgency.com. Dave Miet Insurance Agency. Auto Home Flood Business. 504-556-0809. Dave Miet. INSAgency.com. In New Orleans, we don't eat to live. We live to eat. More is better. Scott Craig of Katie's. That is our slogan. Katie's Restaurant in Mid-City. Ladies and gentlemen, in this Lamarck Automotive Complex, there's something called quick lane. Tires, wheel alignment, you know, struts, servicing your transmission. We're doing all makes and models. It doesn't have to have been purchased from us. It's for you. It handles your lifestyle with your budget in mind. And we want to get you in and out as quick as possible. Quick lane, you got to come see it. You're going to love the experience right there at Williams Boulevard in Kenner. Yeah, you right. Corey Johnson back at you on a Tuesday afternoon. You know, I was thinking about this the other day when I was talking about blue plate mayonnaise. I have never in my life purchased any other mayonnaise but blue plate. Never. There's never been a jar or squeeze bottle of mayonnaise in my house where I've lived many different places from when I was a kid living with my parents to college to to where I am now. Always blue plate mayonnaise, never, ever thinking of anything else but blue plate mayonnaise. Hey, by the way, there's a new look, a new label, different label, same great blue plate mayonnaise in that jar or squeeze bottle. New look, same legendary taste, New Orleans own blue plate mayonnaise. Yeah, why would you even think about getting something else? Corey Johnson with you on a Tuesday if you missed the 4 o'clock hour. Greenway fans, you missed Tulane Athletic Director David Harris talking a little bit about getting into a Power 5. Will that even exist? How do you stay relevant? If you're not going to be in a Power 5, how are you like in the next best thing like American Athletic? He was talking about being ready. I was like, should you be proactive? Maybe hire an outside firm and go seek it. The next thing, David Harris joining us in the four o'clock hour to discuss that. Coming up in just a few minutes, Tulane head football coach John Sumrall is going to join us on the program. Fired up about that. Talk a little football. Oh, David Harris did mention, speaking of football, that bubble should start construction of that early summer be ready for the fall i asked him october it's raining john summerall's team's going to be able to go inside of this bubble in october of this year he said yes unless some time construction problem that type of thing but seven million bucks too seven mil hey some quick other stories the mayor vappy too that's still in the news obviously making the rounds everywhere, the photographs of the mayor and Officer Vappi on the balcony of Tableau in the quarter a week from last Sunday, wine on the table, Vappi reportedly on the clock. Doesn't matter if he was or not, because if he's, you know, the part of the detail for the mayor, the, the mayor shouldn't be having dinner with him. Slight conflict in interest. Now, you think these two would have a low profile. They both hired defense attorneys. Federal indictment seems inevitable. Who would bet against that? They just keep rolling. Like, no problem. Living it up. Boy, this is sickening. No justice for 25-year-old Thomas Rolfs and his family. Murdered when he was revisiting New Orleans from St. Louis. This guy was just 25. A Tulane grad. Loved New Orleans. Coming back. 46-year-old Ernest Weatherspoon, just the case falling apart, deciding to drop the charges for now, at least. He's been in jail since December of 21. Crazy. No, keep Thomas Rolfe's family and your thoughts and prayers. 
Recall number two, this time in St. Tammany Parish, coroner Christopher Tape. They're gonna they got 180 days, six months. They need 37,000 signatures. 37,000. Corey Johnson with you on a Tuesday afternoon. Every day this program on radio, on television, on YouTube. Click to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Doesn't cost anything. The Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson. Brought to you by the Lamarck Automotive Complex in Kennebra. Lamarck for the big store for over 45 years. Number one in the region. Lamarck Lincoln, number one in the state. The legendary Ford truck dealership for over 80 years. Crescent City Ford on Jefferson Highway. Now under the Lamarck umbrella too. Covering all your Ford, Lincoln, service, sales, all your needs. Both locations. By the Lake and Kenner, the Lamarck Automotive Complex. And by the river in Elmwood, Harahan on Jefferson Highway, Crescent City Ford. Lamarck, Crescent City Ford. Five o'clock power hour on a Tuesday. Yeah, it was interesting talking with Tulane AD David Sumrall. Just, I mean, excuse me, Tulane AD David Harris to find out about Power Five and, and where Tulane's going to go and what's the future of the, the athletic department. Building facilities that are, are ready to make that jump to the Power Five if necessary. And then uh, that, that key bubble, you know, that, that's a plus. This bubble will be built for the football program for the fall. The Sports Performance Center, they were supposed to break ground late this fall, November or December of 24, to have that facility ready in 25. This thing's like 50, 60 million bucks. State of the art. It's a lot of Title IX, but it's really a football facility, Sports Performance Center. It's going to be mainly for football. It's how you lure in recruits. Keep a, a, a John Sumrall happy. No, they were supposed to break ground later this year. Right now, no timetable on that. Tulane better not slow down their role. They better keep the role going. That, that's how you lured in a John Sumrall to begin with. That's how you keep a John Sumrall. That's how you keep them. Tuesday afternoon, Trey Yen lunch specials Tuesday through Friday. Are you kidding me? Gourmet Chinese lunch specials for like 10, 11, 12 bucks. Fast food prices for gourmet Chinese cuisine at Trey Yen. If you're an office manager on the North Shore, you got to get lunch for 10, 20, 50, 100 of your fellow employees. Make it Trey Yen. 10, 11, 12 bucks each. 20 different Chinese gourmet lunch specials to choose from Tuesday through Friday. The best lunch special maybe in America. Trey Yen in Mandeville. Don't forget about lunch and dinner. Like tonight, foot of the causeway. You, you North Shore folks know where. South Shore folks, 25 minutes from Lakeside Mall to the front door of Trey Yen. Yummy. Love me some Trey Yen. Hey, Green Wave fans, hang on a sec. Tulane head football coach John Sumrall is going to join us in a moment. Stick around for that. It, all I can tell you is if he's a couple of minutes late, it's not because he's forgetting. It's because priorities. Let me finish up this meeting with players. Let me finish up this. I'm, I'm the head football coach at Tulane. Yeah, I got this, this media engagement, but uh, I don't know, this kind of stuff, uh, it's not like I deal with all the time. It's stuff that I fully understand. I get it. And, and, and knowing John Summerall, this guy is like on top of stuff. On top of stuff. There you go, Miss Peaches. Nope. How about now, Miss Peaches? You ready for the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. It's ringing now, isn't it? Ah, oh, Miss Peaches. Oh, no, I just got a text from the two lane people. He's calling in now. So, anyway, we should be hooking up with. Tulane football coach John Sumrall in a second. 
you know, it's funny. And I'm going to obviously ask him about this. Expectations are like as high right now for the Tulane football program as they've ever been. Like, it's funny. You're going from Willie Fritz that, you know, took the Tulane program to maybe the, the highest level in modern times. You got a new head coach and the expectation may be even higher than if it was Willie Fritz coming back. And uh, some all doesn't mess around transfer portal recruiting, but 41 years old, aggressive, go getter. No, that's definitely one of the first questions I'm going to ask him. Corey Johnson with you on a Tuesday. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's head to Uptown New Orleans. Ben Weiner Drive. Tulane head football coach John Sumrall joins us again. Good afternoon, coach. Good afternoon. How are y'all? Doing well, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm glad to do it. Sorry it's a little late. I've been tied up with some meetings and stuff. and Just uh, glad, glad I could catch up with y'all for a little bit. No, my pleasure, coach. I was just saying as much. I was like, if the coach is uh, late, just knowing a little bit I know about this guy, he's got his thumb on top of everything. He's finishing up with meetings, <laughs> players, priorities, yeah. the team, media second. No, hey, look, media, media is a priority. Uh, you guys are important. Um, and, and really, uh, have been extremely busy today was practice 13 for us. So, um, was wrapping up some meetings and stuff and, uh, forgot, I, I thought, I thought five thirty, not five twenty, and thought, hang on, I, I owe these guys a call. So appreciate y'all having me on though. No, my pleasure coach. <laughs> hey, uh, you've already sort of created a mini monster. I mean, expectations are as high or higher than they've ever been with the Tulane football program, John. Yeah, I think expectations are high. I mean, my expectations for what we need to do are really high and what we can do. Um, you know, I've watched this practice 13 times now this spring and, uh, we're not where we need to be to be class with you. We got a long way to go. Um, I'm glad we don't play this Saturday in a real game. It's a spring game and it'll be a scrimmage of sorts, but, um, I like some things I've seen. Um, I think we're headed, headed in the right direction in many ways. Uh, but we are far from being game ready, and we still have some some areas to develop and grow and maybe some holes roster-wise. We've still got to kind of maybe tweak a little bit to get to where I think we're game ready because, um, you know, it's not for the faint of heart. Our schedule is not going to be uh, forgiving. And so – um, still not really where we need to be. I, I, you know, we've had some really good days during spring practice. Today was my least favorite practice of the week of the of the whole session we've had. I just didn't feel like we brought the energy and enthusiasm you have to play the game with to do it the right way. And um, we're a younger team. You know, I don't I don't think anybody cares. But there's 15 guys that started game one here last year at Tulane against South Alabama that are no longer on the team. And um, and so you you sense. At times, a lack of maturity that we're having to learn and grow through. But you still there, Coach? Coach, you still there? Uh oh, I think we've lost John Sumrall. Uh, Coach, you still there? Yeah, I'm sorry, I lost you for saying you there. Yeah, we we lost you. No, go ahead. You you said you the the, the roster had what? 13 uh, uh, at South Alabama that are no longer on the team that started? Yeah, it's 15. 15, wow. Game, 15 that started game one that wow. are on the roster, which that's the world we live in in college football, but that just sort of gives you a feeling of how young we are as a team. Yep. And there's a lot to, you know, we, we've got a lot of areas where we got to grow up, grow up fast, or, um, and we will, but uh, we, we still have a long way to go to get to where I think we need to be. Now, coming in, when you took the job, now analyzing and knowing the team, the players a little bit better, where you are right now, in year one, are you expecting a winning season and then to go to a bowl game? Yeah, I expect to I be. Mean, my expectation is you, you, you want to win every game. You know, I don't, I, don't, um, I don't, like, you know, I don't put maybe a ceiling on anything. Um, 
and yeah, like I, I'm used to going to bowl games, used to winning seasons. Um, it's you know the last three seasons I've been a part of, uh, we won ten games, twelve games, and eleven games. So winning's sort of the expectation with me, uh, but you know that the outcomes are are great. The outcomes are driven because you're so driven with the process in mind that that the outcomes take care of themselves in some some degree. And right now, with the youth of our team getting them to understand that what it takes to win at that level uh, is is very much a work in progress. And um, I think we have some pieces that can help us do it. Um, I think we have a lot of positive things going on. I think we still have some some major glaring holes that we have to correct quickly or we will not get the outcomes we desire because um, of some of that lack of maturity maybe right now. And we're, we're working on it. We're going to get there. Um, you know, I'm glad it's, like I said, I'm, I'm glad it's April. We play a spring game this Saturday, not a road game because we're not ready for that yet. Yep, yep. Tulane head football coach John Sumrall is with us on the program. Hey, hey Coach, uh, would you say um, – that your team, uh, I guess w- what I'm getting at, what do you do? You have a confidence level that you can win right right away. M- maybe the best way to ask this is: Is it a rebuild, a reload, or somewhere in between? That that might be the best way to ask it. Yeah, I think you're somewhere in between. I mean, I think um, you know. You, the, position by position, I think you'd probably describe it differently. You know, I, I, I look at the the position groups, and you know, I'd say quarterback uh, Michael Pratt's gone, so we've got to figure out who's going to step up and answer the call there. Uh, we've got a healthy competition going right now with Ty Horton and Ty Thompson, and Darian Mitz has been in that competition too, a youngster. But that, you know, so that's that's a, a, a rebuild slash reload. I mean, I think we got talented guys there, but they're not proven. And then they're running back. Um, man, it's, it's Mackay Hughes show right now. And Arnold Barnes, uh, local young man has done a really good job through training camp so far. And Shotty Clayton's had a good, a good spring training camp. So good there. And I think it to rebuild, reload a little bit of receiver. I mean, you look at, the top three wide receivers off of last year's team are no longer here. So uh, we got to have new guys step up to go make plays in the perimeter. And then um, you lose left tackle off of last year's team, starting center off of last year's team. So, um, yeah, there's there's some, some rebuild in the O-line. Um, and then really an edge pass rusher we're lacking right now. I wouldn't even say it's a rebuild or reload edge pass rusher. I've yet to see what it takes to win at this level currently by what, how we've performed in practice. And so we've got some work to do there. Um, and then um, been steady inside linebacker. Um, and the secondary, I like some of what we got. We're just really young. And so that's, that's rebuild slash reload mode too. But there's some pieces that are good, uh, but there's not a whole lot that's done much here at Tulane that we're, you know, there's a few guys here and there, but, We've got we've got to we've got to get up to speed as quick as possible, and um, we'll be fine. You know, the the work will handle the, the the direction we're going, but we got a lot of work to do. Got some players coming in summertime that aren't there now. Yeah, we've got some high school kids that'll be here, and then there's a couple of transfer kids that have been committed to us that are, that are not here right now. And um, you know, the transfer portal window for the spring is open um, for the next two weeks, and so. There will be some movement there. It's just the nature of the beast, the world we live in. We'll, you know, you'll inevitably you'll lose a few guys. You got to get a few guys. And, um, we've got some work to do in that area to to maybe add a few pieces to the equation that can help us play at a high level. Any edge rushers available? Yeah, and we're scouring. We're looking. Yeah, I mean, we're there's there's some available. I think you know the, the there's always trying to find the right match and. You know, going back to the world we live in, it's, you know, what's the w- w- NIL game with each recruit looks different. And yep. so you're dealing with a lot of those things that it's, it's a little bit of a moving target. There's some guys out there. It's just a matter of who's the right fit, who, who wants to be a part of what we're doing, um, and, and who, who do we think can perform at a winning level. Come September, do you anticipate a starter or two on the roster? that 
presently is not on the roster. I guess I'm saying in the next two weeks, do you anticipate grabbing a starter or two through the portal? Yeah, I think you hope to add guys that can compete for starting jobs. Yep. I mean, you know, I say this a lot to our guys, but everything he gets earned. So nobody's going to get given anything. Um, and they got to earn the opportunity to be a starter. Uh, I think we need to, you know, as you work through the spring portal window, you're not looking, I'm not at least looking to um, just add a, a big number of guys per se, but he, we need a, a couple of really quality guys. And so it's not so much about how many you add, it's about adding guys that create um, real value, real ability for your team to, uh, to, to take a step forward. Speaking of September, offensively, what should we expect from a John Sumrall two-lane offense? A kind of run-oriented first and passing second? How do you do it, Coach? Well, we build it on a players. You know, I think uh, your systems are great, but no system really matters if you don't recognize who your best players are. So I think you, you have to first start with whoever your quarterback is and build the offense around what fits that guy. And then – I think you also have to um, really lean into who are your playmakers who who are going to create positive, productive, explosive plays with the ball in their hands. And you know every team's different. Um, and then you got to play complimentary football. I mean, you know, our first year at Troy, we knew we were really good on defense, and we could we could win maybe in a, a rock fight, if you will. And we won some games ten to six or ten to nine, or um, I think we beat. Texas San Antonio 17 to 12 that year in the bowl game. Uh, so maybe at times we were a little bit more uh, defensive oriented and run game driven. Last year, offensively, uh, we, we kind of flipped and became a, a heavier pass game offense and uh, really leaned in on that and more because we were better at receiver and our quarterback was improved. And uh, so we threw it a lot more. And so I think, yeah, yeah, yeah embrace what your strengths are and you try to maybe offset your weaknesses and uh, we'll, we'll do what uh, really fits our personnel as we grow. And then each team, like I said, you have a formula to win. Every team's formula looks a little different. No, no two teams are the same. Um, and I think that's the, the, the trick is figuring out what is our formula to win. And that's how we'll play offense. How about defense, coach? A read and react type of defense, more of an attacking style, using the athletes. What? How, how do you play D? Yeah, we're pretty aggressive. You know, nice thing is the the defensive structure that was run here last year came from my system that we ran at Troy. So, you know, the the previous coordinator here last year, he was my coordinator for a year, um, and so the the schematics of what they did here uh, in the twenty three season. The terminology, it's all my terminology that we already used. And so um, that part for the players is really nice because the learning curve um, is a little bit easier, a little bit simpler. And so the, the style of defense, the schematics of the defense, the structure of the defense, it's the same defense. It's the defense we've already had in place. Uh, the, the defense that was in place here came from, came from what we were doing at Troy before. So it's the same system. So we'll you know, we, we do need an edge pass rusher to create what we like to do because we like to, you know, our kid last year at Troy led the country in sacks at field in and our boundary edge rusher was a really good player as well. And so those are a couple areas we got to continue to maybe find ways to, to build that room because that's an area where we've leaned on in the past to maybe create negative plays in the backfield tackles for loss and sacks. And so we've got to, we've got to develop that area. Coach, you come in at Tulane as the head coach. We were we've been kind of under drought conditions right when you first got here. Obviously, we're out of it now. Last Wednesday is like the dead opposite. Uh, yeah. Some somewhere in between is what we deal with here. Uh, you you've been here before. You've been a coach at Tulane. You know the weather. Uh, I had David Harris on last hour. He says ground's going to break on that bubble. And uh, it, it should be completed by fall. I said, John Summerall's team's out in an October practice and the clouds open up. They'll be able to run into that bubble. He said, yeah, unless there's like a construction delay. You fired up about that football facility? Yeah, extremely fired up. It's, it's needed, you know, with the climate here, 
uh, you know, you're not far from, I would say, being on the coast. So you're going to, you're going to have inclement weather from time to time. And so the thunderstorms part of it, you don't mind the rain because you need some wet ball work, but the thunderstorms, you know, a lot of the practice when you have a lightning strike within eight miles, you got to wait half an hour to have practice and it can really interrupt your flow of what you're doing. And so the, the, being able to practice through maybe inclement weather. And then also the other piece of it that's nice is you know, during training camp, you have a, a morning practice, but you have an afternoon walkthrough. Well, it's nice to be able to go into a indoor climate controlled environment to some degree uh, for an afternoon walkthrough instead of being in the heat down here in South Louisiana where not, you know, you get humidity and you got temperatures that are higher. And so the, the, the indoor practice facility is, um, extremely necessary. Uh, I think this day and age, if you're not, if you're not, um, able to have that kind of facility, you're really putting yourself in a disadvantage. And so I think the, 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 the progress that's being made there is vital to the growth of the football program for sure. I mean, I would assume when you and your agent were discussing this job with Tulane, th- those are the kind of things that come up, right? Yeah, you want to make sure there's a commitment to continuing to grow the program. And, you know, like, uh, I'm worried about the 2024 season, but really you, you embrace opportunities that you feel like are interested in continuing to grow long term. So it's not just a one year deal, it's a, hey, we're committed to doing this for the long haul we want to continue to grow and so you you're looking at commitment through facilities um you're looking at commitment through staffing you're looking at commitment through resourcing for your players whether it be nutrition uh, which i think we've got a good situation or um nil i mean all the stuff that goes along with it you're looking for all that stuff to be aligned and for there to be a real commitment, because without alignment and commitment, you have no chance of creating long-term success. It's just not possible. I mean, yes, it takes a, a desire and an appetite to compete at the highest level for, for a long-term stretch, not just a year or two. With all that said, with all that said, Coach, I'm assuming the Sports Performance Center was part of what lured you to Tulane as well. Uh, that facility... Uh, Right now, no timetable on groundbreaking. Any concerns on that? Yeah, I mean, I've you know, I've I've been I've I've been told some potential timetables there, which gave me um, real hope for what that looks like. Now, I'm not not my job to announce timetables, but um, when I went through the process of interviewing for this job, there were timetables discussed on those sort of things, and so I think they'll the university will make those public on their, on the, on their time frame. They feel like that's right. But I've been given a, a, a general idea of what that looks like. And so, um, that, that was a part of those discussions that, you know, you want to, you want to have long-term commitment. And like I said, the Wilson center right now is undergoing major renovations. I'm currently displaced. I don't really have a permanent office right now. If you will, I'm kind of, uh, a man without a home uh, in regards to a true office setup, and I'm kind of bouncing around the Wilson Center and the Glazer Club in some different areas over on campus. And um, the the Performance Center um, was discussed at length when I was going through the process of um, taking this job. And um, without that commitment as well, I think you, you, you may not feel as excited about what is coming, but I think the way that that was um, explained to me gives me reason for real hope here as we continue to move forward. From what I understand, 50 plus million dollars breaking ground, maybe November or uh, December of this year was what the goal was. Now I, I'm not quite sure if that is the goal or not. Does, does any of that worry you or not really? Yeah. I, don't, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I want us to see this, get this stuff done. And yeah, I mean, I, I think we're going to get there. I don't know exact date. I'm not, whether it's November, December, January, February, whatever it may be, that's not my, my primary focus. Um, but us having a target and pushing forward and having a plan is 
uh, I believed in place. And so, you know, the university's given me every reason to believe that we're going to head down that path. And there are some things that have to happen strategically to be able to, to push the button on go. But, but, uh, but, you know, like I said, as I've gone through the process before I got here to, to take this job, I feel like it's something that, you know, we've been told it's coming and you just have to let the things take place that have to take place to make it happen. Yep. Hey, John, uh, um, with, with, with that sports performance center, it, it's really a bit, it's a football facility and it? it'll be where your offices will be and where football will basically be located. It's, it's kind of like the standard that you see all across the country, right? Yeah, so from my understanding, what I've been shown and the way it's been described to me is it's uh, a majority of a football complex. There might be a couple other sports that have some things that are housed in there as well, but um, but it's it's essentially a, a, a new performance center that the primary base operations for football is what will be housed in there. So um, I can't speak to every every nook and cranny in the building yet because. We're still, I think, in kind of some some phases of where we're polishing maybe all the details. But yes, it's going to be where all of our operations are essentially housed in regards to weight room, um, a lot of meeting room space, coaches' offices, et cetera. Hey, Coach, uh, Power Five Conference, ultimate goal. You'd like to see Tulane football playing in a Power Five eventually? Well, I think, you know, we're in a unique landscape and climate, right? Like, there, there's, you know, no, no orange or the Pac-12. So I even get around my staff all the time. Like we all get used to the term Power Five, but we've already we're already down to a Power Four, if you will. Yep. And so the the, the ever changing landscape. What you want to do is you just want to continually press on and press forward and position yourself for positive things to happen and come your way. And um, that means winning on the field. That means. Uh, building great facilities um, and making yourself as attractive as possible for when opportunities come up, you know, and um, I, I like where we are. I think we're in a place where, you know, we, we want to try to pursue the college football playoff. I haven't backed down from that being a goal or an aspiration. I've not shot away from that. And so with a 12 team playoff, we can, we can get there in the conference we're in. Yep. And so it's not, it's not mandatory to, have to do anything to, to chase and pursue our goals and dreams. Um, but you really just want to continue to grow and, and what that means conference wise, uh, you know, I don't think you get caught up. I, I, those are conversations that David and, and the folks I work for will, will navigate those channels. Um, but for us, it's about, you know, really whatever conference you're in, you want to have the resources to be able to compete at the highest level in that conference. Because if you win your conference, you're going to have a chance to play in the playoff probably. And so for us right now, that's our focus. As things come up, those discussions, you never know where they come or where they go. And um, you, you take those things from an administration standpoint, those folks will, will take those conversations on. It's stuff that uh, that's definitely – very, very fluid right now in regards to the landscape of college athletics, so it's conference affiliation stuff for sure. Hey, John, one final question. Uh, what would you tell Tulane fans, or better yet, better question, the non-Tulane fan on why they should come to Saturday's spring game at Yeoman? You know, pro sports in New Orleans are out of reach for some folks, like Pelicans or Saint season tickets. I always say, like, you're like a mom and dad. You got two kids. You live in like Luling or, you know, the North yeah. Shore, Slidell. You have no connection to Tulane at all. I'd buy a season ticket, you know, package for the wife and the kids or the husband and the kids and come to Tulane games because it's a bargain. It's a great outdoor college atmosphere. The color, the pageantry's there, and and it's and it's it's priced right. So I, 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 my, my, my thing is like, how do we get these non Tulane connected people in Metro New Orleans to become Tulane season? T- I got a family, a wife with four young kids. And I can tell you this, I've coached a lot of different levels, but it's like Tulane in a great city um, with, a, with a lot of fun things to do, man. We've got, we, we need to be New Orleans college football team. And, uh, 
you know, the, the, the environment and the atmosphere at Yulman on a game day um, is very family friendly. Um, and so I think for the average family, um, it may be uh, honestly a better place to go enjoy a game, enjoy a Saturday, uh, enjoy a home college football game on a college campus than a lot of other schools because I think the family component, it, it's a, it's a family friendly environment and you're in an intimate setting with, you know, uh, a group of people that it's going to be, you know, 20 to 30,000 people each Saturday, hopefully towards the, the bigger side as we continue to grow this program where you can um, really feel safe and feel comfortable and feel welcome. And, um, and I also think one of our greatest strengths is, is man, our student athletes are, are very um, engaging and they're, they're highly intelligent young people. And I think you'll find that, that the young men on our roster um, do a great job uh, really engaging with, with younger kids. Like I, I bring my son to practice it, it, when he doesn't have a school day, maybe on a Saturday. And then to watch our guys interact with young, young kids is so special because they're wired the right way. They're, they treat people the right way. And I think it's a really fun, a fun fit for a family to come watch a game and be a part of a, a college football environment. I love the New Orleans college football team comment, Coach. It should yeah, be New Orleans you know, college it, football team. It, yeah, I don't see why not. You know, I mean, we're right here and with with, with an on-campus stadium now that's such a big bonus and advantage for us, I think. Yep. Uh, you don't have to leave the city limits to, to go find a fun place to watch a game with a team that's going to play quality football. Hey, Coach, I really appreciate the time this afternoon. Thank you so much, John. Best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Sorry for being a little bit late, but always good joining y'all. Have a great evening. You too. That's John Sumrall. Hey, and, 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 and go and go, Pels. We're pulling for the Pelicans tonight, man. Go Pels. Yeah, Pels tipping off in about 35 minutes. Yeah. Good call. Thanks, yeah. Coach. All right, brother. That's John Sumrall, Tulane Green Wave head football coach, joining us on the program. Corey Johnson with you on a Tuesday afternoon. Coming right back. Why wear the same old glasses that everyone else is wearing? Stand out from the crowd. Come to Art and Eyes. Art and Eyes is not your typical eyeglasses store. It's one of the finest eyewear shops in the country, right here in New Orleans, with precision engineered prescription lenses and gorgeous high quality frames from the heart of Europe, Japan, and the United States. Our products are thoughtfully curated, and our staff are here to help you find exactly the right frames. Art and Eyes are magazine as unique as you. Custom window treatments can enhance the look and value of your home. At Helm Paint and Decorating, we're proud to offer custom plantation-style window shutters by Scandia. Perfect for any window, including large frames, French doors, sliding doors, and arches. American-made SL300 shutters are available in many colors to match your personal decor. We'll come out to measure, and you'll receive fast delivery. Plus, they're virtually maintenance-free. Helm Paint and Benjamin Moore. Let us steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Supply. Young's Dry Cleaning has free pickup and delivery. That's right. Young's Dry Cleaning has absolutely free pickup and delivery. Home or office, East Bank or West Bank. Call Young's at 288-8381 or online at youngsdrycleaning.com. Yeah, you right. Corey Johnson back at you on a Tuesday afternoon. You know, Helm Paint and Decorating is now in Baton Rouge. Seven locations in Metro New Orleans, East Bank, West Bank, North Shore. Four Metro Baton Rouge locations. And just like New Orleans, Benjamin Moore, high quality paint, free two hour delivery anywhere in the Metro. When you got a paint in Metro New Orleans. And now when you got a paint in Metro Baton Rouge, do it once, do it right. They'll steer you in the right direction. Helm Paint and Decorating, now in the capital city. Corey Johnson with you 
on a Tuesday afternoon. Hey, if you missed the four o'clock hour, Greenway fans, you missed a lot. Tulane University Athletic Director David Harris joined us talking facilities, Power Five, all that good stuff. And in the five o'clock powwow, if you missed that for about the last 25 minutes or so, Tulane Greenway head football coach John Sumrall was with us. What's that, blue boy? The weather should be nice this weekend. You want to go to the Tulane spring game at Yelman? Huh. Interesting. All right. Hey, New Orleans, have a great evening. See you straight up 4 p.m. mañana. Greenway fans, you can check all of that out on YouTube. The Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson. Click to subscribe. Mañana. You're on the Neutral Ground with Corey Johnson on TV on Cox Channel 4 and Spectrum Channel 333. Also on YouTube, on radio at NOLA Talk, 93.9 FM, WSLA New Orleans. It's 6 p.m.